Here's what you need to know about screening, about testing for the autoantibodies of type 1 diabetes. And if you think this is about spotting symptoms, you're so wrong and you need to watch this video. Hey, before we get any further, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. I greatly appreciate the support. Getting screened for the autoantibodies of type 1 diabetes means you're taking a blood test that is looking to identify four common types of autoantibodies that researchers know are related to type 1 diabetes. How do they know that? From decades and decades of research, thanks to TrialNet and Enodia and Breakthrough T1D, formerly JDRF, and many other leading organizations. All right, so stage one type 1 diabetes means you test positive for at least two autoantibodies, but you have absolutely no symptoms and your blood sugar levels are still completely normal. Now you can imagine it's very rare to actually identify stage one type 1 diabetes in someone because if you have no symptoms and your blood sugars are normal and you feel normal, you're probably not going to the doctor and saying, hey, test my kid for type 1 diabetes. Test me for type 1 diabetes. That's why we're trying to get more people to screen their children or their family members for those early stages for stage one and stage two of type 1 diabetes because you can't spot it on your own. Just like stage one, it's very hard to identify and find people who are in stage two of type one diabetes because unless you're really educated on screening, you're not taking your child or yourself or your sister or your uncle to go get screened for those early stages of this disease. Most people, even people living with type one diabetes think, oh, I'll just spot the symptoms, that's good enough. Speaking of symptoms, stage three of type one diabetes is when you actually finally develop symptoms. Many people still also test positive for autoantibodies in stage three, some people don't. Many adults who have been diagnosed with type two diabetes have actually been misdiagnosed. And one of the ways to clarify that misdiagnosis is to ask for autoantibody testing and C-peptide testing to see if you actually have type one diabetes and more specifically LADA, latent autoimmune diabetes in adults. LADA is just a type of type one diabetes that develops very slowly, which means it's very easy to be misdiagnosed with type two because it can look like type two for years when it's actually type one diabetes. And lastly, this overall exhaustion and tiredness and difficulty, just staying awake and focused. And that's because your blood sugar level is so high and your body can't access that sugar and use it for fuel. So why should you get your children screened or your family members screened, especially if you have type one diabetes and you're confident that you can spot those symptoms? Because we can identify type one diabetes now in stages one and two, when you're still producing plenty of insulin, there are several clinical trials that can actually potentially intervene and stop the progression of this disease, which means stop the attack on your pancreas and protect and preserve your pancreas's ability to produce insulin and protect the beta cells in your pancreas that produce insulin. I've lived with type 1 diabetes for 25 years. So those treatments won't work on me because my pancreas doesn't produce healthy beta cells anymore. The earlier you can spot type 1 diabetes, and intervene and stop that attack, the more you can protect your body's ability to produce insulin. And this is a really big deal. There are now like a dozen studies happening today in different parts of the world. And they all rely on people identifying type one diabetes in stage one, stage two, or within just a few months of their diagnosis. And the reason is because they're trying to get to you before your immune system has already attacked and destroyed all all those beta cells that produce insulin. Leading organizations like Breakthrough T1D and many others are trying to change this. They are trying to teach pediatricians and your primary care physicians about screening and why it's so important and how to do it. 